So, like, <laughs> I think there's a whole, like, uh, uh, group of people on TikTok who make, like, drug videos or getting high videos just for, like, the cool factor, right? Like, sometimes I watch videos like that one right there, and I'm just like, has this person even really ever gotten high? Or they're like, yo, dude, I bet this is what, it, what it's like when you get high. What is up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. If you're new to my channel, my channel's all about mental health. I also talk about addiction, addiction recovery, all that stuff. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. All right, so I am a TikTok newbie, okay? My beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, she is all up in TikTok. She doesn't make videos, but she watches a ton of TikTok. She recently got me into it, and um, a creator that she got me into is uh, Sarah Hawkinson. Not sure if you know about her. If you want, go check her out. She does some like horror movie reviews and just some commentary in general. But anyway, Sarah Hawkinson recently did a video on TikTok drug culture. All right, and it's a pretty good video. Um, she talks a lot about how you know TikTok is geared towards children, and there's this stuff going on, and but. I wanted to kind of chime in and give my perspective um, because Sarah Hawkinson discusses how she didn't, you know, try even smoking pot until she was about 25 years old. Um, and I wanted to offer a different perspective because those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Chris. I'm a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. Uh, my addiction really took off uh, when I was a teenager. I was in my addiction for uh, almost a decade and I've been clean since 2012. So I just wanted to chime in on this and yeah, discuss it a little bit because statistically, most people, most young people are going to try drugs. They're going to try alcohol. Abstinence isn't really something that we can expect. Like I have an 11 year old son, right? And we have open discussions and everything like that. But anyways, I thought I would chime in and look at some TikToks and I was browsing through, I was looking up different hashtags and everything like that. So the first, the first little TikTok niche we'll look into is ketamine. All right, so these are these are kind of interesting to come across. Um, Sarah Hawkinson mentioned it in her video, but you look up hashtag ket, and you'll either find ketamine TikToks or TikToks, because ket means something in another language. But anyways, let's check out this first one. All right, so <laughs> I wanna put this in a little category of its own. So like, <laughs> I think there's a whole like uh, uh, group of people on TikTok who make like drug videos or getting high videos just for like the cool factor, right? Like sometimes I watch videos like that one right there and I'm just like, has this person even really ever gotten high? Or they're like, yo, dude, I bet this is what, it, what it's like when you get high, you know? Um, but yeah, that's an effect that like a bunch of people are using. Uh, but then I came across this one too. It was a little bit more interesting. So people are asking, what is a K-hole? A K-hole happens when you take too much ketamine. What happens is ketamine blocks the neurotransmitter called glutamate in your brain. And so you have this Ooh, a little out of experience. Uh, your mind and body become separate. That's why ketamine is called a dissociative drug. Some people like being a zombie while others are terrified. If you don't know what it is, don't do it, kids. <laughs> All right. So yeah, let's discuss. So something that's interesting that's always fascinated me about uh, uh, drug use, substance use, um, is how we have these different tastes for, for drugs. And by the way, one of the reasons I, I tiptoe around these videos and it's taken me so long to make a video like this, I never wanna glamorize drugs, but I do wanna have a conversation. But for example, like he talks about how like some people like walking around and being a zombie, that wasn't my jam. Like I remember trying, you know, Xanax, right? And it was just, the worst feeling ever. And then there are also people who like uppers, right? Like Coke, meth, stuff like that. That's not what I wanted because I was mostly drinking and using because I was so depressed and I didn't want to, I didn't want to feel anything. And I like to get high and just sleep or get blackout drunk and just sleep. Like I couldn't imagine being on an upper and being up like forever, right? But anyways, like I said, I'm glad that you talked about neurotransmitters. Here's what's interesting. They've been using ketamine, low dose, low dose ketamine for depression treatment. And there are some positive results, but I'm kind of on the fence about it because of this. 
Like, as you can see, like people use ketamine to get high, right? So there are a bunch of clinical trials like currently going on for ketamine treatment for depression. But in my opinion, we need to find out if it's actually treating depression or if it's just like getting high the same way I would pop, you know, prescription opioids to get rid of depression. You know what I mean? Like if I'm getting high, I'm not nearly as depressed, okay? So something else that's really prevalent on TikTok is psychedelics, all right? Like this is huge on TikTok. So I pulled a couple, but there are some where like, people are like teaching you how to make like DMT and things like that. And I have opinions about that. But anyways, uh, here, here's a couple just on the topic of psychedelics. Hello, did you know you can mail acid very easily? You just have to tape it into a birthday card and then send that card and no one notices. Follow up question, does anyone want to send me a birthday card? Hey, don't do that. Don't mail drugs, <laughs> all right? Like, what? What? Yeah, that can get you in a lot of trouble. It is very, very illegal. Let's check out this next one, though. I'm gonna pause through this one it's a little bit longer. Um, but yeah, so so I will say this, like with what she's saying, she's talking a lot about the propaganda and stuff around like uh, demonizing psychedelics and everything. And some of you have seen, seen my videos I did on psychedelics. Yeah, there is, uh, you know, a lot of different treatments that they're starting to do for, you know, depression and anxiety um, using psychedelics, like low, again, low dose, right? But like this whole like, oh yeah, this is, this is a myth that people think they can fly on psychedelics. <clears throat> Like, not really a myth, even though it's not like 100% of people who use psychedelics are gonna go jump off buildings. Like, what we need to run, understand is, like, even though drugs like psychedelics, like, you're not gonna overdose and die on them, like, when you look up the statistics, many of the substance-related deaths are from accidents, okay? Because when we are high, when we are tripping balls, we do very stupid things, right? So yeah, even though they might inflate these numbers, and that's that's something that just really bothers me, is you get extremes on both sides, right? You get the anti-drug people who just make up lies, like, oh, weed is gonna make you like eat your mother's face off, right? And it's like, no, it's not. And then you have other people who are like pro-drugs, and they're like, you can never ever be hurt while doing these drugs. And it's like, okay, let's let's come to the middle, let's tell the truth and explain what really can happen. So yeah, like right here, like she's talking about, like there are studies, you can go uh, research it, look it up and everything like that. Um, so they are starting to use it. Um, but yeah, like the only way you're really gonna get that treatment right now, to my knowledge, unless they pass a law that I don't know about, it is still illegal in most places, but like the only way you're going to get that treatment is if you are part of some kind of clinical trial. But I'm keeping an eye on it because anything that helps people, helps people. Me personally, as a recovering drug addict, like that's not, that's not a treatment option that I can use. Like it, she, she mentions like, you know, addictions and alcoholism. Um, after working in treatment for three years, I do know a lot of people who tried uh, ayahuasca treatment, or I believe the other one's called Ibogaine, right? It's this natural kind of hallucinogen. And like a bunch of those people relapse because it's this very short term solution, right? You open up these, you know, parts of your mind and you get this kind of spiritual experience. But if you don't keep that momentum going with some kind of treatment, like relapse is pretty likely. Yeah, but overall, like I agree with her. Like hopefully they're able to start using this uh, psychedelics more often with like mental health treatment, but in like a controlled setting, in a controlled environment, you know what I mean? And the, the dosage is monitored. Like, 
you can't just like, or you shouldn't rather, just go to your dealer and just be like, yo, let me get like a bunch of mushroom caps. I'm gonna cure this depression, right? It should be like in a treatment session setting. Uh, like what they do with ketamine, like they hook you up to like an IV drip and you're like in a place they don't just like, at least to my knowledge, they might do that. If any of you know, let me know down in the comments. But from what I've seen with ketamine treatment, you are in uh, uh, like a, a doctor's office while they give you the ketamine treatment. All right, so this last um, genre we're gonna look at is like um, kind of like drug education, uh, addiction recovery type stuff. Um, so yeah, let's check out this one first. All right, so like, uh, I, I, you know, I'm indifferent about this TikTok in general, but I will say like, hopefully like people came across this video and they're like, hey, what's Narcan, all right? Listen very carefully, listen, follow the words coming out of my mouth, okay? Narcan is a life-saving drug for opioid overdoses, all right? Many people, I have known people who have died from opioid overdoses because people with them while they OD didn't call, um, you know, uh, 911, right? In many states, in many, many, many states, because of the opioid epidemic, you cannot get in trouble for calling in an overdose, all right? So you can have needles, spoons, drugs, everything all around you, but they will not charge you if you are calling to save somebody's life. So please remember that, and if you, you know someone who might need that information, tell them. There are so many, like we have tens of thousands of overdose deaths every single year, and I'm regularly thinking about how many of those are because people didn't know that you can't get in trouble for calling in an overdose, all right? So Narcan is an opioid uh, uh, overdose reversal drug. Some states, like um, where the opioid epidemic is really bad, you can actually buy it over the counter. I think they actually just started doing that here in Las Vegas as well. So if you live with somebody who is addicted to like heroin or prescription opioids, it's a good idea to keep some Narcan in the house. All right, let's check out this next one. Yeah, like, it, it's crazy because, uh, Prescription opioids were my thing. And like this dude, he's spot on. The one I'll say is like the the eye, the pin pick, uh, prick pupils, I wouldn't notice that. Maybe it's just because I don't like gaze in people's eyes very often. But uh, yeah, the mood swings, um, when people are coming down, like dude, dude, when I was coming down from opioids, like you did not want to be around me. I was just, I, I, I just, just a little just, ah! right um and the itching the itching it's so weird i don't know why it happens maybe i'll look that up sometimes um but like this dude's pretty cool like he's clearly in recovery he makes a bunch of videos about like addiction recovery in general and uh when tristan sent me this dude's tiktok i was like oh cool and i was looking and this morning i was like going through his page he has a lot of recovery stuff and then and then i came across this one randomly <laughs> His whole TikTok is like addiction recovery. And then it just takes this hard right turn into white privilege. And I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, that's all I got for this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about TikTok drug culture. And by the way, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I wanna do some mental health uh, TikTok reactions to depression, anxiety. I've seen some stuff about borderline personality disorder. So follow me at The Rewired Soul. Send me some uh, that you would like me to take a look at, react to, all that stuff, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books at TheRewiredSoul.com, as well as everybody who gets merch from the merch store. You're all awesome, all right? Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.